So after the Gorilla Classic, we were looking forward to um, the conference championship. It was time to win. We got it stolen from us the year before by a very strong Missouri Southern team on our home track. It's a sour feeling losing, knowing that past Pitt State teams have lifted the trophy in the air and that we came up short. It's humbling and it hurts. Yet we were the third team to break 950 in the conference for this year, and we had uh, one being a very strong Northwest Missouri team. They had two milers under 410 at the time, broke a school record, and we also knew Missouri Southern had a sub-950 on the clock. They have a very, very strong anchor leg in Ryan Riddle, and we knew that uh, Nebraska Kearney has the great middle distance runners. We, we thought they were going to be a factor, and Fort Hayes has middle distance runners, so conference championship was going to be very intense when we were... We were looking forward to it. We want to win that. That's some middle distance bragging rights. It's 10 points for the team for Pitt State and the team title. We wanted to win the MIAA DMR, and we knew what it took, and we were going to work for it and be ready when the gun went off. Uh, we had some decisions to make on the Pitt State DMR team as far as who was going to run what leg. Yeah, so I guess there was two big questions. Previously, Connor Southern had always been our, our anchor leg with the 1600. We were talking amongst ourselves about maybe trying Connor in the 1200 and Mason on the 1600 because Mason shows a lot of grit at the end of races. He's got a, a big kick and if someone's in front of him, by God, he's going to find a way to catch him. And uh, Connor's kind of an experienced veteran who could start a relay real well as the first leg is pretty important. And then, yeah, additionally, the big question was whether the 800 leg would be Tall Matt or myself. And yeah, before the Gorilla Classic, I felt pretty certain that I'd be on the DMR once I was, well, assuming I got back to running 153 or so. Like, I didn't have to get to peak performance, but if I just got back to piecing it together. But yeah, once he broke that record, it was like, oh boy, yeah, I'm probably in trouble. <laughs> so yeah, that really shook things up. Obviously, going into the conference championships after the Gorilla Classic, after Mason runs an amazing 405, Coach Jewett came up to me one day, I think it was like, hey, we're thinking about changing the order, not just because we're Mason ran faster than you, just, but we're explaining, we're giving, we're giving you a heads up and want your opinion in it, just because this has been, it's been your spot for two and a half years at that point. So he kind of wanted to give me a heads up and let me know what I thought about it. Sometimes it seems like I'm not the best teammate in the world, but I really am. And of course I was like, whatever the team needs, if it gets us a DMR title and a big trophy, I'm all for it. So he's like, so what I expected to hear from you, but just wanted to give you a heads up. I was like, okay. What was gonna be the best recipe for success that Saturday night at the conference championship? We ended up going through with it and put me on the 1200 and Mason on the 1600 leg. It was a responsibility that I strive for. I, I wanted the stick when it came down to who was going to win this race. I saw it like going into that weekend and talking about how there's a prelim and a final for that 600 yard like in my head there was no doubt in my mind that I was running three that I was running four races like I go into that I, I don't see three races on the schedule I see four because I'm gonna make that final this, that's that's how confident I was going into that. Uh, well coach gave me the option he said do you want to run the six or the eight and after coming off that school record 800 I in all honesty I don't know how much faster I could have gone and so I was sitting third in the conference in that. Versus the 600, I had the lead. I was seated first going into conference by about a half a second. So I had more confidence in my ability in the 600 to score more points for the team. So it came down to, I just wanted to do what was best for the team. And it seemed at the time the 600, like I had the opportunity to get 10 points versus six or in that ballpark. At the indoor championships, I did the 800 only. Uh, I didn't double on the mile or anything. And yeah, I was not planned to be on the, the DMR. I was available if needed, depending on how, you know, if somebody got hurt or there was an emergency between Connor, Mason, or Tom Matt, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, I was just focusing on the 800. I was, I, Christ, I think I was seated 18th or 19th in the conference, so it was going to be a big accomplishment if I could just qualify to the finals and score points, and that would be, that's what we were focused on, yeah. Going into it, my role was to run a 5K and a 3K instead of the 5K mile 3K like we did the previous year. Um, really, my role just changed. We thought that I be, had become a better 5K and a better 3K, -er, and the mile was incredibly deep as well. Obviously, um, Ryan Riddle was in there, Mason, uh, Connor and then Reese Smith had also run I think 408 I think Jake Norris had run 408 or 409 or something like that also I think Seth Simonson the conference had run really he had run really well so the conference was just incredibly deep in the mile and we thought even if I do run 408 again 408 could get me sixth or seventh and so 
Um, we kind of just did away with the mile. We thought that I could possibly win top three in the 5K and top three in the 3K. And so we felt like getting those 12 to 20 points um, would end up being about the same. Uh, that 600 yard prelim felt really good. I, I handled my heat really well and ended up winning, winning it. That was the first collegiate heat I had ever won. After that, I was feeling super confident going into that DMR. And I was a little nervous, but for me, once I step on that track once for a track meet, like any meet throughout a weekend, and I get that first race through, and if it goes well, I'm not gonna feel that nervous for the rest of the races, races for the day. In the 600 prelim, it went, it went okay. I was not very happy with my time. I was about almost a second slower than I had run it before which in the 600 yard is kind of big, but it did not feel good. Like it felt way harder than it should have. I remember I got through 400, it was roughly on pace, and I, I wanted to get first in that heat. I wanted to make sure first of all I was in, and second of all I wanted to be in the fast heat. So coming about 100 meters left, still felt strong. I was closing in on some guys from Fort Hayes I don't know if I over leaned or what my form fell apart and it became less of let's finish the race strong versus let's stay on your feet. Like I was stumbling, I was trying to catch myself for about, it felt like 60 meters, probably like 30 meters and it, it hurt. Uh, my prelim, I guess the time wasn't spectacular. I think it was like 155, uh, but you know, it was a really good competitive effort. I think and that was the biggest thing that had changed because previously when I was having issues earlier in the season, I was getting dropped on the last lap and falling out of contention. But yeah, that race, I was right up in the mix. I finished third in my, in my heat, I believe, against two really sturdy uh, 800 meter guys. And yeah, I felt like, yeah, it was, a, it was a good competitive effort and I felt like I was really in the mix again and capable of doing better. Uh, after the six, I was not feeling good. I felt way worse physically than I had in a long time after a race. I remember I, I didn't get off the track for about 30 minutes. I was on the infield. I just, I couldn't move without trying to not throw up. So that was a huge problem for me. Uh, I remember I got off, get over to our trainer, and immediately it was working my hamstrings, just try to get ready to run again. And honestly, I, I remember I was warming up and talking to our 400 leg Graham on the DMR and I was telling him like, I might need to talk to coach, I might need to have Colin run this 800 leg because I was not, my legs did not feel good. I wasn't really aware, I thought he'd done all right, I thought he qualified third in the prelims which to me was like oh yeah he did his job, maybe he seems to be doing fine but I guess he was struggling and there was a, behind the scenes there was some uncertainty so no I wasn't totally aware of what was going on, I thought uh, yeah, as far as I knew, Tall Matt and Graham had done their job and they were uh, marching onwards to the DMR, yeah. Uh, the 5K did not go well. Um, personally, it did not go well. And for a team like Moso, <laughs> went one through four. I went, and then we went five, six, seven. So we had some good success on the back end, but personally, I didn't do too well. Um, and then we go to the DMR. I thought we were going to race Northwest Missouri, Kearney, Nebraska, and Missouri Southern, and we expected Ryan Riddle to be on the, the anchor lake. We talked a lot on how big of a lead do we need? How far in front of Missouri Southern do I have to be to hold him off and win this race? It didn't even end up going that way at all. Conference entry switched up and Missouri Southern formed a B team. Northwest formed their strong A team and Kearney had a strong A team as well as long as Pitt State did too. Going into the race, I expected to get the baton in first, just pure matchups. Pitt State versus Northwest, each leg, it looked like we had the advantage. I don't think, that was the first time I ran at 1200 since my freshman year. I had some familiarity with the distance, but nothing too crazy. First time I ran it, I had the most C team kick anyone's ever seen. Very high confidence level in myself. So going in to the 12, I was had really high confidence level and everything. I felt like I had the best combination between an 800 PR and a mile PR, so I felt like no one in the conference on a 12 could touch me besides the guy I train with, so even then, I don't know. So I kind of was just like, just leech onto whoever takes it out. That's exactly what happened at the conference meet. Took it with like 500 to go and said, see you later. Connor Souther ran an amazing first leg, uh, way under three minutes, 258 something and a strong, strong lead on second place, 10 plus meters. 
and really set the tone. The building was loud, it was exciting, the long jump championship was going on and the student sections were chanting and screaming and it was intense and it was loud. It was a whole lot of fun as, as the race developed. Stepped on that track for the DMR, looked to my left, to my right, saw all the guys I was running against and I can handle these guys. I can do this. I've done this before. I can. I just have to run fast <laughs> and get out and just focus on my first hundred meters. That's all you can do. So Graham ran really well. Took the handoff perfect. Didn't expect anything less from Graham. Dude seems to know how to take every handoff imaginable. And as always, he's a 48-point guy. Just just ran lights out. He's got his head tilt, and and when he tilts his head to the inside left, we know Graham's running fast. So we have. We have 100% confidence when Graham Huddleston gets the baton in a DMR. Getting the stick in first is, it's an interesting feeling because, I don't know, it makes you, it honestly makes you like a little more nervous when you see your teammate like take over first place. You're like, oh, I really can't mess this up now. <laughs> I really can't mess this up. Make that go for granted. Do not get burnt. <laughs> don't, let, don't let me catch you. It really it just felt like any other 400 leg for me. It felt pretty solid. I, it wasn't too notable of a leg for me, honestly. I just felt like I took care of business fairly well. Started out, I get the lead from Graham, and I was thinking, okay, like I'm doing okay. I run the first, maybe even 150 meters, and my train of thought changed from, I'm doing okay, I have a lead, to this already hurts. And for me in the 800, it normally takes about 400 meters, maybe 500 meters before like I'm actually starting to feel the burn and this is I'm about 150 meters in and I'm already hurting I was nervous I was afraid I was gonna lose it lose the uh, lose that lead to another team and I did not like that feeling just roughly under two hours previously Matthew Wilson ran a 600 yard prelim and he had to fight very hard to make the finals in that it was a very honest race with a big kick at the end a scratch and claw into the finals and we knew him coming back from that was going to be a challenge and we trusted him to get the stick around, and that's exactly what he did. He uh, held it together off a tough double and slowly got caught and then, and then fought very hard to get us the stick as close as we could to Northwest Missouri, who had just taken the lead on the 800. Apparently he was struggling, I guess. Like I said, I wasn't really aware, but yeah, he was having a tough go. And I mean, it is hard to double all those races and things, especially, you know, fast races like the 600 yard and the 800 meter. And yeah, it's tough to get the baton in front as well and try to try to lead the pack and pace it on your own. I think it's certainly easier to chase someone down than it is to hold someone off, uh, both physically and mentally, you know, if you got to you got a carrot to chase it helps more than just trying to go flat out on the front and cooking yourself now i was starting to wonder again if i might have a duty on the dmr going forward uh northwest and carney got they got close they ran magoob and i can't remember who carney's leg was but they ran some damn good legs why should i worry when we got mason straighter on this <laughs> i'm not putting that ah, in. sorry <laughs> Uh, I, that dude is, he is something special. As a runner, he just, if he wants it, he'll get it. And that is something really special to have as a teammate, especially as an anchor. I have complete confidence. I'm not even nervous. I'm, I'm the slightest bit nervous. Northwest was almost 10 meters in front when we got the stick. Um, I closed the gap right away. It, it may not have been the best strategy. Some would slowly eat up the gap and try to get him at the end. And, Within the first lap, I, I was stride for stride, right on his, right on Reese Smith's tail, and I was ready to race. He took out in like a 28 to catch him, and that was kind of a head scratcher. I was like, oh god, this might not end well. Uh, but like I said, Mason's got the goods. He's a different breed, and so yeah, once he caught up to Reese, he just kind of sat. Then we started to wonder, oh god, is he going to get antsy? Is he going to try to be a hero and make the move with 800 to go or 600 to go or something and let Reese just do the opposite to him? I wanted to take the lead on lap three, lap four, lap five, lap six. I was just ready to take control of the race, but I stayed patient. And I, I remember looking at some teammates who were on the outside of the track and like telling me like just be patient, just wait, doing the, the hands down signal, like just wait for your time. And then uh, with 400 meters left, I took the lead and sub 60 for the last four and, and uh, got a first place finish in the DMR. And it was, it was a revenge race. The year before we got second place to a very strong Carney team and it felt good to win. He ran a, he ran a good leg, good old 404. 
Reese, Reese Smith gave him a run for his money, but Mason, Mason had it. It was just super cool. I think they lowered their school record. Um, it was an MIAA conference record, super cool. I, I genuinely don't remember each leg because all I'm thinking, I guess when you go to conference championships, you're not really thinking like time. All you're thinking about is just place. Like where are we at place-wise? Because we need these team points. We need these points. Like we, we form charted for this amount and we're going to get this amount. And what are they going to get? What's Moso going to get? And then the big thing was just the momentum that it led for in today two of the conference championships. I mean, we sat there on that rail. It's the last event and you're just going nuts for Pitt State um, and they win. And so you just, it's going into day two. You're thinking, okay, we're close. We're close to winning this thing. One of the DMR title was, it was an amazing feeling too. I, like, I just remember hugging Connor and Connor's really emotional because he's been working so hard for so long to get that DMR title and I'm just hugging him. He's like, we did it, finally did it. Finally got that title. First time winning the conference, winning a conference event, not just as a team was pretty, pretty special just cause I'd always came real close. Been on three DMR podiums. I'd been on two mile podiums at that point and if 1500 podium at that point so I had a lot of podium finishes but none of them were on top. Coming through with Mason getting that win and uh, hitting that meet record was it was kind of special it felt pretty cool like it was pretty cool like I mean there's nothing there's not much else there to explain it's just it was a different kind of feeling it's something you dream of as a kid like same thing in high school like you want to be on that podium you want to get that state championship and then doing it at conference level it's just that next step up uh, just for me personally, I wish I had done better. I felt like you could have thrown anyone on the 800 leg at conference and get the job done. So that, that kind of stung a little bit, but I was still very happy for the team, uh, surrounded by three other amazing runners, and it was, just, it was a good feeling. It was a statement. It was, it was, I'm not scared of who I'm racing against. I'm going to respect everybody. But I think I found a home there on that anchor leg, and it, it feels good. A whole lot of work went into it, and passion, and effort, and then being able to produce when the gun goes off. Is a very rewarding feeling. So the biggest goal for DMR going into conference is definitely getting the win. Those 10 points were big. I think more importantly outside of the points, us getting that win really gave us more the energy to finish the job on day two and really start taking care of business on day two. So going into day two of the conference championships, I knew we knew exactly what it was going to take to win. We had it form charted, we ended up calculating it by we were one point underdogs. And less than 24 hours before that, we were 50 points underdogs. Going into the mile, my job was to score as high as I could, challenge for the win if it was there, but lock up second place. Like I had to get eight points for Pitt State. I was perfect. I mean, my mile race, obviously no race is truly perfect, but ran it about as tactically sound as I possibly could for the most part. There's a little bit of drama in the middle of the race with some cutting in and out of the lanes when we had a real big pack and got a little tripped up and tried to sell it a little bit. Ryan made a big move right before 600 to go. And I, for a split second, I had thought, go with him. And I was like, no, nah, cause that might come and bite me towards the end. So maximizing my points was more important than going for a win. Stay patient. Not a lot of guys can match my kick. So I was like, save it for the last two laps. And then when I hit a lap to go, punched it, closing like 27 mid, I think. It was one of my off races. The kick at the end wasn't there. Ended up getting fourth place in the mile. But luckily, Old Faithful Connor Southerd came through and locked up the second place, ran a great race, had an amazing kick at the end and got those eight points for Pitt State that were very much needed. Got second place, secured big, big eight points for the team. No race is perfect, but that was pretty close to being perfect. Things started rolling. We were going. We had a 60-meter hurdle champion. We had a 60-meter sprinter champion. It was, we were rolling. Pitt State was on fire. Uh, that 600 final, I wasn't feeling very good going to that either. I was, I was kind of nervous again, uh, just on my ability to bounce back from those, those two previous races that weren't very pretty. I need to make this trip worth it. I, I was in finals, I was gonna get points, but I didn't want to get just a couple points. I wanted to get on that podium and get enough points to really help the team. We had about 200 meters left and the Fort Hayes guy makes a move for the lead uh, to pass up his teammate. And I really tried to respond and go with them and I actually, I had, I, don't, I, I felt good. I, I felt all right, I had something with me. 50 meters left, 
I, I'm barely gaining on them and I'm just slowly inching away. And I remember telling myself form, which a lot of time to finish your form falls apart and all I was trying to do was just drive the knees, keep the toes high and just, I ended up, I barely inched out this guy and got second in my heat and third overall. So it was a good bounce back from the night before. I was gonna be pretty proud if I could just score in the 800 because I think I was seated 18th or 19th beforehand. And yeah, I ultimately finished fifth. I ran 153 mid, which was the best mark I'd had all season. Um, it's off my personal best, but that was certainly progress and I was promising, especially for the outdoor going forward. Pitt State men's distance has not really had to score the big points before. Since I've been here, um, we've always done well with the country, but we have not been dependent on, I felt like we were dependent on an indoor and outdoor conference. And we, and we like being dependent on, and we wanted to show up and do our part. And so going into that, we, I go out, I warm up, and I come back in, and our high jumpers didn't do as well as we wanted them to. Our 200 guys got fifth and seventh. Missouri Southern just went one through four the night before in the 5K. They're probably gonna run pretty good in this 3K coming up, knowing that the conference championship's on the line on this exact event. And crunching the numbers, we knew that we had to split them up. We knew we had to put a Pitt State jersey between their one and two, no matter how it happened. It was a redemption race for, for the average race I had earlier that day. I can triple, I can, I can run, I can empty the tank, I can show up again. Coach Jewett and Coach Crow said to me both at different times, they're like, all right, it's definitely coming down to the four by four. Get ready, get ready. And then, then I started getting real nervous. <laughs> and they said that before the 3K. I saw, I saw Bryce before the 3K, he looked pretty nervous. <laughs> we were all like, it's neck and neck right now with most, so we gotta make something happen. It was a very slow developing race. We got, we got out at a very average pace and the front group took off. And then I just stayed in the back and started counting heads and said, all right, how do I get in the top eight? How do I get a point? Reese Smith takes the lead. I kind of just hide out, hide in like seventh and eighth for a majority of the race. I think 435 or 436 for the first 1600 meters. And Braden Zaner just won the slow heat right before we're warming up on the track. We're running and warming up. Braden Zaner holds everybody off and wins the slow heat with 829. And so we're just kind of like, holy crap, that was fast. And so in my head, I'm thinking, if this goes out slow, Braden Zaner could score from the slow heat, like, cause it's, it's a tactical race. I was like, that's my thought, but then I just kind of immediately throw it out and I'm like, now we're racing. And as I kept counting the heads, they just kept coming back one at a time, one at a time. And then one of my favorite memories ever at Pitt State, I'm going down the back stretch on a small 200 meter track and about a hundred meters in front of me, my teammate Bryce Gron is sprinting down the home stretch against um, Gideon Camonte for Missouri Southern. And, and this is very rewarding for Pitt State that a guy like Bryce has put in the time and the effort and he trusted the coaches and the training and trust his body and knew that it didn't take Superman to run amazing in this race. It took Bryce Gron. Doing my warm ups for the four by four while the 3K was running. I was kind of peeking over there every once in a while, seeing how it was going. I hear the bell lap and I sprint over to the track to watch it. And I see Bryce and just absolutely smoking Gideon on it. And I'm just jumping up and down, going absolutely wild. So the race goes, ends up, and it goes great. I get second, and then um, I turn around, and I see Mason cross the finish line. And he crosses the finish line. He has this huge smile on his face. And I'm just like, and the first thing he says to me is, you beat Gideon. And I'm like, heck yes. And then the second thing he says to me is, Zayner beat me. And I'm like, holy crap, how slow did you run? <laughs> I guess I'm not really thinking that Zayner ran 829. I'm thinking Zayner ran in the slow heat and Mason's smiling because Zayner beat him. And I'm just like, what place did you get? That's horrible. Like, why did? Why are you so excited? And I knew that my freshman teammate, Braden Zayner, in the previous heat ran 829, which was a PR for him. And I knew that my 830 got six in our heat. So at that point, I knew Pitt State scored three in, of the top eight points at conference. And, and so it, it was just like best case scenario. It was absolutely incredible. It was super cool. And pretty soon we knew that we had a lead. Dramatic stuff had to happen in the 4x4 to not take this title home that we worked so hard for and that we wanted to hoist up in the air and celebrate with. It's like, shoot, we just have to score anything <laughs> in my head. And then like all the nerves washed away and Crow comes over to me. He's just like, get the baton around. Do not drop it. That was all he said. He didn't say, oh, it's on the 4x4, and just gotta get her in. And 
got the baton, did my thing, ran fast, got around and got another medal. Just neat. It was it was a good feeling to bring that trophy back. It happened freshman year. We brought it. We had it at home. We hosted the meet and brought the trophy back. But I only scored, I think, three points, which it was cool to score as a freshman. But I didn't feel like I had earned it very much. Versus this year, uh, scoring ten in the DMR and then six in the six hundred, it felt it felt good to actually contribute and really play a role in this team's championship. Sophomore, junior year, nothing, and that hurt. Being being from Pittsburgh, I take take a lot of pride in bringing hardware back to my home. Lewis Rollins said it that this is the first time that he's been here in his been his six years at that point. It was the first time that they had actually needed the distance team to win it. So that was pretty special coming from a dude that's been here a long time. So love the trophies. It was going to be a battle between us, Missouri Southern, Northwest Missouri and uh, ultimately we pulled it off so yeah that was a that was really rewarding as well i was able to score and the men's team was able to win by i think 10 points in the end it wasn't even a nail biter necessarily so yeah that was fantastic just going from walking in there like it's going to take a lot to walking out like oh my gosh we did it it was just the most incredible feeling i've ever it was the most incredible feeling i've ever felt it was incredible i didn't want to stop taking pictures i never wanted to walk off that track it was just one of the most incredible feelings I've ever felt as a gorilla. And just the momentum keeps rolling and rolling. One race after another, Pitt State's becoming a very, very strong men's team. And it, it happened so fast, it, it, was, it was something special.